Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I like to take science and apply it to all things plants. In today's video, we're talking about when exactly do we stop watering and should we be adding fertilizer or anything like that when we're shutting down the garden in the fall. Now, I talked about shutting down a garden garden and an annual garden, meaning like a vegetable or a flower bed. And we discussed the removal of debris, what to leave behind and all kind of that sort of stuff. And when it comes to fertilizing an annual garden, there is a fall application method we can do. It's called split application. Now this is very common in the farming world not so common in the gardening world and the reason for this is the reason why farmers would do this it is a simple time-saving technique if we're able to apply our nutrients in the fall and we're able to somehow stabilize those in the soil with some sort of stabilizer nitrogen stabilizer for example and then retest in the spring we can then determine if we need to reapply more nitrogen or if we're good at the time of spring for seeding it's a very busy time for a lot of farmers so this makes sense for us as gardeners it doesn't because it can waste money if not done properly what i'm saying here is that if we apply nitrogen or any sort of fertilizer that is water soluble it can be leached or gassed out of our system just naturally it's a very natural process that takes a place in our soil it happens with organic fertilizers and it happens with synthetic some have higher levels of leaching than other but we're not going to get into that here today so when it comes to fertilizer you can save it for the spring or you can do that split application if you're looking just to save time and get into that garden right away in in the spring not in the fall unless you're doing a winter garden if when it comes to perennials trees and shrubs however there is a little bit of a different story so if you have anything perennial you actually want to water until that ground is frozen the reason for this is because the plant well it looks like it's going to sleep and going completely dormant the reality is much different the nutrients is being used in the roots those roots are building up bulking up in biomass to help propel that plant into the future so in the spring the amount of greenery and foliage we tend to see is completely based off of the root biomass that was collected and grown during this time right now one of the only times the plant tree bush perennial is able to focus on root development solely is when those leaves are dying back so right now before the the ground freezes so you can see how that time frame is very small compared to to what the plant is doing in the spring of putting on buds and flowers and leaves. So we wanna help that plant as much as possible. This means when we apply fertilizer, if we choose to apply fertilizer, it you need to, to be root growing fertilizer. So stuff that's made for the roots, in particular potassium in this case, phosphorus to an extent as well. What we want to avoid is too much nitrogen. Too much nitrogen can cause flushing of greenery. And this is particularly true for anything that's more of a herbaceous plant, such as a hosta or a peony and things of that nature. If it is a woodier plant and it's losing leaves, so any sort of bush, any sort of tree, we don't have to worry about this as much because obviously it's not gonna suddenly put on buds and new growth on the greenery side, but we wanna to try to avoid any sudden collapses for lack of a better term of that upper biomass that may be deciding to start growing now it's very popular for fertilizer application to take place in the fall for lawns because the greenery or the new flushing out of the growth isn't of particularly concern it, with the grass so much it doesn't cause any sort of shock or dieback but we want to focus on those roots so if we can get that potassium and phosphorus up in our soil that is ideal now you don't have to fertilize you can solely just use water or provide water until that last possible moment when the ground does begin to freeze the best way to do this hands down is with a frost proof ideally hose so those mornings when you come out the ground's not frozen but the hose is it's frozen it's going to be very difficult to water unless if the hose thaws out in the sun which may not always be the case so i have a gardenia uh, hose reel that is frost proof that i'm using 
Now, of course, you don't have to get this. You can, you know, find different methods to this, making this work. I actually have also hot water plumbed to the outside. Benefits of buying a boomer's house. <laughs> so the hot water that's plumbed outside will ultimately allow me to do a mix of hot and cold, which will unthaw the lines and ultimately allow me to keep that ground a little bit more frost free longer but again this isn't something that everyone has access to so if you want to hand water um, some stuff or whatever the case is then do so appropriately you can pick your favorites maybe you have chives or something of a particular interest that you like and enjoy that's a perennial and maybe you just want to focus on watering those for this year until you can get a gardenia hose whatever the case is give it a shot so when we water, we want to water the same way we would water before. So in the spring, we use less water because our plants aren't nearly as big. Midsummer, we use a lot of water. And then fall, we notice we are using a little bit less again because the plants aren't growing as rapidly. So we want to use our eyes and our fingers, our touch, to determine if that plant or that soil needs more water. If the hydration seems nice and high, we're not going to water. If we only water once every three to four days, then you water once every three to four days. It's not a big deal. So don't stress out about that too, too much. Just, you know, use some common sense here and apply the water as needed. But the key here is if you do choose to fertilize, that you want to again provide that water because our ground sometimes can be very dried out at this point in the year. And if we apply fertilizer without sufficient amounts of water, we can actually burn those root tips and harm those root tips. And we also wanna make sure that that fertilizer and the water is applied before that ground is frozen. If the ground is frozen, you must stop immediately because again, we're gonna have that opposite effect where that fertilizer is going to sit on our soil surface. It may leach off or run off into surrounding water bodies, which is obviously not ideal. Or again, it can cause that root burn, which regardless of your standpoint on runoff fertilizer is not ideal for you. So we wanna avoid that as long as possible. So I hope this helps you guys out. I hope this motivated you to blow out those sprinkler lines at the last possible moment <laughs> i know it can be like kind of stressful determining like when do i do it i always make my husband wait until like literally the last possible moment so i'll wait until my night times are getting very frosty like 9 10 minus degrees celsius and then i'll be like okay shut the water off now but this year i'm doing winter gardening outdoors in zone three canadian zone three which is incredibly cold not a direct correlation to usda4 but pretty darn close to a usda4 so i'm going to be doing a lot of hand watering <laughs> this year i think because even with my gardenia hose i don't think he's gonna he's not gonna be too keen on the repairs in the spring if things go awry so we'll see anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below what time of the year you blow your sprinklers out and when you shut the water down and if you've ever thought about watering later into the year or if you have what benefits have you seen the following year and i will talk to you guys next time bye